Hey YouTube, not so slim Jim coming to you with another update, but of course the ATF has gone and done some stupid chicanery and they decided to make the rare breed FRT or forced reset trigger on a machine gun. That's right, a trigger that has a forced reset so when you pull the trigger down and it goes boom, it resets your trigger back up a little bit so you can press it down again to go boom again. They say because that automatic motion of it pushing it up makes it an automatic weapon. And of course, they love to do wordplay. So they use the word automatic and automatically a bunch of times to automatically turn it into an automatic weapon. <laughs> yes, I know. Just by using that word a bunch of times, they think that justifies their meaning. Now, there's already been former ATF agents that come out and uh, got their hands on the trigger, fired it, saw how it works, and said this obviously does not meet the definition of what a fully automatic weapon is. And Rare Breed Trigger themselves has basically told the ATF when they got their uh, cease and desist for manufacturing and selling, they go F themselves. Say it again. Say it to my fucking face. Because FRT Trigger and Rare Breed... I like you guys just a little bit more now because defund the ATF. <laughs> you guys are. What do you mean, you people? You people understand the basic principle of how the force reset trigger works. Um, most people know that. A lot of people may not. So I want to show people how the trigger works versus a standard semi-automatic a fully automatic and a binary trigger because believe it or not a binary trigger has been around for over a decade now and it's still completely legal yes i know the atf has gone after it a few times but hasn't been able to be successful because well it's still on the market so let's go ahead and look at some animations and i'm going to break down the difference between the triggers and why the frt trigger is not a machine gun all right here we have a full automatic trigger uh, everything in the full automatic trigger pack is different the trigger, the disconnector, the hammer, the auto sear, which obviously you don't get in semi-automatic, all completely different. So this can function in semi-automatic mode, where when you pull the trigger, fires, and when you're holding it down, the disconnector holds onto the hammer to release it, and the sear face on the trigger holds onto the hammer until you release it again. Now when you move the selector switch to full auto, it removes the disconnector, and the auto sear holds on to it. When the bolt comes back for it, it automatically releases it and it fires. Now here you have a semi-automatic, which is very similar, but it has no auto sear. So there's only one position or two positions, safe and semi-automatic. So the disconnector can't be removed. So when you pull the trigger, you're held back. The disconnector grabs onto it, just like the full auto and semi, and it grabs by the face. Now, in a FRT trigger, you have the green piece of metal in the back. This, when the bolt comes back, will strike the green piece of metal, which actually forces the trigger group back forward and then locks into place. When the bolt moves back forward, it releases it. That's literally the entire thing. All it does is forces the trigger forward and allows you to fire again. Now, this is a binary trigger that has two sets of disconnectors, one that grabs on it normally and then a secondary one that when you release it forward creates a small time gap so that way it can't grab onto the face of the sear of the uh, the hammer so that way pull back fire release fire that's how a binary trigger works well that's the basic of how the triggers work uh, if you have any questions comments or concerns on them and you're not quite sure how it goes i will make a, a video with more explanation this is just a quick and dirty for people to get a look at it and have a better understanding and as usual leave your comments down in the comment section